Water Clear Resin Casting Tips. In this tutorial we're going to be covering some of the basic do's and don'ts of casting water clear resin or aliphatic clear resins under pressure to create uh, very nice clear bubble free parts. Now one of the first things you need to understand in order to create very nice clear plastic parts that are bubble free, it all starts with the mold making process. So first of all you want to make sure you use platinum silicone molds, not tin cure molds. Tin cure molds exude alcohol which can fog the clear uh, resin later on in the casting process. Also you need to make sure your molds are vacuum degassed for pressure casting otherwise you wind up with little uh, pimple like bumps all over your cast parts. And if you're making small cast parts, it's a good idea to preheat your molds. And of course, as you'll see here in a minute, mix with clean uh, steel spatulas and mix in clean plastic measuring cups. And of course, with any aliphatic resins, you want to make sure you work in a well-ventilated area and at a room temperature working environment. Around 75 degrees works really well for uh, any kind of resin casting. And of course, we're going to be using pressure to remove the air bubbles later on. And last but not least, remember that texture of the cast part will affect the clarity. So let's get started. What we're going to be using for this particular video, we'll be casting with a new water clear resin that we have called WC786. And this is a uh, five minute working time and about a two hour demold clear casting resin. And it's important to remember that uh, most uh, resins like this have two different ratios, a volume ratio and a weight ratio. Now, anytime you're working in small amounts or for any kind of critical project, I really recommend working in the weight ratio as opposed to the volume ratio. So here we're measuring out our resin uh, 100 parts A to 96 parts B. Now, for this particular batch, I wanted to do uh, uh, keep the ratio fairly simple, so I measured out 96 parts B first, because that's a little bit harder to nail down on a gram scale, and then I did the 100 parts A. And I actually wound up doubling this batch, because as soon as I saw how much it was, I decided uh, I would need a little bit more resin, so I went ahead and doubled up and did another 96 grams of B and another 100 grams of part A. And it's a good idea if you're like me and you don't like doing this kind of math, keep a calculator handy, or I have a whiteboard across the room from my work area here, and I write the formulas up uh, on the whiteboard in, in big letters or numbers so I can see them easily and that way I can make sure that I have the right mix ratio so I don't get distracted. I know exactly how many grams of A and B that I'm going to need. Now it's time to mix up our components and you'll notice I'm using a steel spatula. This is just a steel frosting spatula that you can pick up at uh, like a smart restaurant supply or any kind of baking store. These are great for mixing uh, moisture sensitive resins and once you're done res mixing your resin just make sure you use a paper towel to clean that off really good before the resin cures and you can use that again and again and that's a great way to make sure you're not ever introducing moisture into your resin and that's one of the things that later on will greatly affect the clarity if you're mixing in moisture that's uh, the moisture will form little air bubbles later on and as soon as we're done mixing up we're ready to pour because this has a five minute working time uh, that's a not not a short working time but it's still quick enough we want to move fast and at a deliberate pace here make sure we get that resin poured out into our molds and then immediately get those transferred into our pressure chamber because it's going to take a minute to get those into the chamber and get those situated and get the pressure turned up. So uh, five minutes is about right. That's about the, the fastest you're going to be able to work in a situation like this where you have resin that needs to be poured and then the molds subjected to pressure. And remember that it's real important that the resin is subjected to pressure while it's still very liquid. If it starts to gel before the pressure is applied, you're not going to get bubble free parts. Now one final step that I do before I close the pressure pot is I give it a light blast of mold release over the top of my parts. And what that does is that helps break the surface tension on the, uh, the resin facing up and helps the bubbles that come to the surface pop easier and give you nice slick backs to all of your cast parts. Now real important here to move fast and deliberately shutting your pressure pot. 
and make sure everything is sealed tightly and evenly so you don't have any leaks. And this is by no means a tutorial on pressure pots. If you want to know more about pressure pots, there's a lot of other things out there on YouTube. I don't recommend you uh, construct your own pressure pot unless you are comfortable working with pneumatics and you feel confident in your abilities to not uh, destroy your shop in a pneumatic explosion. So. Once we've got our resin secured in our pressure pot, we're ready to hook up our air hose and turn up the pressure. And you notice we hooked it up and we're turning it up gradually. And the reason I'm turning it up gradually, we don't want to splash resin out of the molds. If we have a quick blast of pressure, we'll spill resin out of the molds and make a big mess in our pressure chamber. So good idea to turn that up slowly. And ultimately we want it to sustain that pressure throughout the entire pot life and the uh, curing of the resin at about 40 to 50 PSI. Now this particular resin, the WC786, cures in about two hours. I like to leave it in a pressure chamber at least for two hours, if not a little bit more. And that way we make sure it's completely cured, especially small thin parts. You'll find when you're casting really thin parts, if uh, you're working in a cooler area, it'll take much longer for those to cure to their full hardness. So make sure if you're working in a cool area, preheat your molds. And I, as I mentioned earlier, when you're doing small parts like this, uh, putting the molds in a hot box before you cast will make a huge difference in the quality of parts that you get out of the mold. And we're here in Texas where we have heat in spades, so all we have to do is leave molds outside on our curb before we pour, and they come out beautiful. And now we're ready to demold our cast parts. And one of the things I wanted to illustrate here is when you're using clear casting resin, the texture of the part plays a critical role in how it will look. If you're casting something with a lot of texture like this rose, you might remember this from a previous video, you're going to wind up with a look more like frosted glass rather than uh, optically clear uh, glass surface. So remember that when you're casting with, uh, if you're casting organic parts like hands or faces with skin texture, you're going to wind up with more of a frosted glass kind of look, whereas something like this uh, bolt that has a smoother finish to it, a machined finish, is going to look more like uh, what you would expect glass to look like. And then if you have something with uh, absolutely no texture, with a gloss finish, then you're going to wind up with a much more glass-like look to it. We have a lot of customers that want to cast up life cast pieces in optically clear resin like this. And the downside to that is a, a life cast has a lot of surface texture. And that texture ultimately uh, looks more like frosted glass than uh, polished glass or pane glass like people typically expect glass to look. So remember that when you're choosing clear resin for a particular part, remember that the more texture it has, the more that clarity will be obscured. Now here's two identical pieces. One was subjected to pressure and one was not. The piece on the left obviously did not have pressure. The one on the right does. And you'll notice all those tiny micro bubbles. That's the side effect to not casting under pressure. Whereas all those bubbles go into solution and are completely invisible when it's cast under pressure. So you see that texture plays a vital role in how that clarity is going to translate into that cast part. And one more thing about this rose piece that we cast up. That particular mold, you might have seen that in a previous video, uh, we did not vacuum degas that rubber. And that resulted in the little pimple-like bumps all over the part uh, that I mentioned earlier. You'll see those tiny little bumps there if you look closely. And what that is is where the resin under pressure forced its way into any little micro bubbles that were in the silicone that normally would not be an issue in a room temperature environment. So remember that really important if you know later on you're going to be casting under pressure you have to vacuum degas your molds or you'll get those little uh, defects on the outside of your part. And there you have the basic rules of casting water clear resin and of course remember that WC786 clear casting resin is available in the casting resin section of our web store at brickintheyard.com. And for more tips on resin casting and uh, mold making tips, be sure to follow our Instagram page at instagram.com slash biddymoldsupply.